Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in again to another uh, episode of Voters Direction. Oh my God, I have an echo. Chill out, Maggie. Hello? Hmm? Okay. I had to echo, I had to get rid of it real quick. Um, so yeah, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Vote Expressions. Um, I'm here once again with Kai. Hello. So, uh, I had a episode last week, not last week, it's a couple weeks ago, with uh, Sheldon about his time at DreamCon and uh, Kai was also there. You just want to get his uh, take or his experience at DreamCon and just cons in general and just mm. probably catch up with him from uh, last time we spoke. So, I uh, well, know what? I think before talking to Sheldon, you were my last guest that I had before mm. him. Okay. I was actually... Yeah, I was actually looking at it. I hadn't been uh, able to record much for anybody. And I just was going through my Zoom recordings. I was like, okay, which one was this one? Because it just does it by the date. I don't title it. And I was just like, oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, first of all, how how you been doing? Uh, you know, hanging in there. Day by day and all that jazz. Still uh, streaming? Yeah. When I, um, I'm I, not feeling too burnt out. I feel you. So what uh for you, what what contributes to burnout for you? Um I think on the streaming side of it, when you're like playing the stuff you like but no one shows up for it, but like as soon as you turn on like whatever the like flavor of the week is and a bunch of people show up and it's just like yeah, but I don't even really like this game. Um, and then outside of streaming, I got a regular job. And when that is constantly like shifting your schedule around, I get home and I'm like, I don't even feel like turning on the stream. I just want to take a nap. I know. Um, it makes me think one, he's not, well, he streams sometimes, but he's mostly on YouTube. Uh, one of the guys I, I like to follow, um, it's real eighty five. Mm. He he is currently playing uh, Sun Wukong or yeah Black Myth Sun Wukong, which everybody's playing. Right. And the the first video got like sixty something thousand views. Um, and then every other video after that is like a third. And it's and this and I've seen it happen with him, both him and his cousin um are on YouTube big and I follow both of them. And there's been instances to where he even said it when one of the videos that he's done with Sun Wukon, he was like, Hey, you know, I'm really enjoying this game, but I'm seeing the likes aren't up there like they should be. He's like, So if you know, it's basically just like I he's like, I would like to still play this game. It's like I'll play it on Twitch. It's like, but if I'm playing this game. And of course, he's playing it longer than what we're actually getting to see because he's not going to put every time that he dies and he has to keep going right. over and over. He's like, so basically, like, if I'm not getting the likes or the views, why am I going to put the effort into it for not that many people to, you know, yeah, to support it? You know, for me, if I get a thousand anything, I'm going to be ecstatic. I'm be like, shit. It's like that's fine for me. Is like, but he has a huge base, and if you know, only so, so yeah, so it's like, yeah, so if 60, 60 some thousand people are watching the first one, and only less than 30,000 are watching the other ones, then clearly there's a big drop. So, yeah, not much of the, the people rocking with it. So, yeah, I, I do get that, uh, that burnout, and I, I have heard, or at least that frustration, I have heard people, um, mention that. That is uh, frustrating to not have uh, at least the stuff that you like not be um, as much or get as yeah. much attention. 
Yeah, because you are essentially monetizing your free time. And, like, I only stream. I don't even go through the trouble of having, like, VODs or, like, clips that I put up later just because I'm like, I don't care that much. But so, like, if you are doing all that, not only are you spending all your free time playing this game, but you're, like, on the whole time you're playing this game because you're trying to be entertaining for, like, whatever content you're putting out. And, like, after all that, to then, like, edit those videos and put them up and still people not watching. It's just, like, man, that's my whole afternoon and for nothing, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's frustrating. I, I literally gave up a video I was editing. I'm like, okay, this is going to be my first time. I went and found all these clips that went to this movie with all these steals. Mm -hmm. And, like, okay, I'm talking about it. Make sure that the length that is up correlates to what I'm talking about. Then I'm talking about some other stuff. And then initially I'm listening to, I'm listening back to it. I'm like, first of all, I'm talking way too long. This can be a lot shorter if I condense it. But by then I had done like, oh, two thirds of the video. I was like, I don't feel like going back over. Like, cause I'll have to re-record the audio and then do this. I'm like, F it. I'm just going to put it up. It's like, I don't have the, the equipment or software sophisticated enough to to uh to warrant you know all that it, it is just frustrating yeah man i had i had a day where i just like passion struck me and i was like i'm gonna make a tiktok about the little dances i do uh when i'm playing destiny 2 the little emotes and stuff and i was just like yeah i'll just like take a couple screen recordings and I'll stitch them together. It'll be fine. That was like a four hour process. And by the end of it, I was just like, man, I'm never doing this again. It's, oh man, it's amazing how much time goes into something that the finished process won't be that much. And it's not like, and it is, and like you said, it is a thing of just like, I wouldn't mind doing this more if number one, I had the time to do it. And number two, there was actually some payoff for it. Yeah. Like, I liked the video. I think it came together well. But, like, if no one watches it, it's just kind of like, well, that was, like, a thing I spent my afternoon on. I'm not super yeah. sure what to do with that now. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so what, what are you playing right now? Um... I have kind of been on this thing of just cycling through the games on my PlayStation, not only for my own like sanity and not getting bored at whatever I'm streaming, um, but just like for my own personal amusement. So right now I'm bouncing between like the first Descendant, um, Zenless Zone Zero, Black Myth, and what else was I playing? I think I just re-downloaded Hogwarts Legacy just to like replay that again. What's first descended? I want to say I've heard it, but I've I've been off of uh, video game news and stuff for a while, so um, like a lot of games that come out, and I don't really know what they are. Do you do you know what Warframe is? Yes. Um, first descended is Warframe, but made by like a Korean studio. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, now I remember. It yeah, plays, I remember seeing it. Its loop, its gameplay loop is very similar. It action's a bit different. Um, but yeah, it's a like there's different heroes who have different abilities, and you like get materials to make new guns and new heroes, and so on and so forth. How 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 much longer do you think the uh, what do they call it the hero shooter? uh craze is gonna go that seems to be because like even marvel rivals kind of fits mm -hmm. that thing of like you know hey he's this cool character and different abilities and you know yeah i was thinking about that um so i think uh to tie it back to what we were saying like things like the first descendant i don't know we're gonna go away anytime soon because they mm -hmm. fall more into like gotcha territories where like the real goal is to like resist the temptation to spend money to buy new characters um right. 
but with like hero shooters a la like overwatch and stuff i think overwatch is gonna stick around for a while just because it's like the big one and the one people have invested time in um but as far as all these other ones that come out like uh concord came out recently i think marvel rivals may have a chance just because it's not like it's not guns again instead it's like an action game but like put into like an overwatch style so that may stick around for a bit just because it's marvel but yeah i think for a lot of these essentially like live service games like that people have already picked the one that they're willing to sink hours into and we don't got time to like pick a new thing to like be invested in the battle pass and the skins and the seasonal content like i, I already have my game i don't care about this new thing All right. I also see Fortnite falling into that because uh, they just brought Doom um, in and and new X Men and different things. One I've never played Fortnite, but one thing I've always appreciated from them is their character models. No matter what property, look beautiful and accurate to what you think of when you think of these characters. Mm -hmm. um or even when they have um even when they did marvel the different characters at marvel the iterations of the costumes i i'm always i always look forward to seeing how different um mediums or different um properties uh put their stamp on the character designs like you know mm -hmm. black panther is going to be some variation And I've noticed it, but especially thanks to the MCU, like Black Panther is going to be some variation of that first costume he had. Um, a lot of people, instead of like Cap's normal suit, they try to do like some kind of amalgamation between um, his like a more like technical, like mili militarized suit. Yeah. And like a, uh, yeah, and, and like, you know, still like a little bit comic y, whatever. Um, but yeah, the character models always look good for that. And, I, and I'm just like, I would like if whoever, you know, whoever makes Fortnite, whatever, if they could probably like get some people who are well versed in like an action game or whatever, if they could just take those character models and put it in like an actual Marvel game. Mm hmm. I mean, Not happy. um, Epic is the one that runs it, and they also own Unreal Engine, which, like, everyone and their grandma uses to make video games. And plus, Right. Fortnite did that thing recently where they were like, how about instead of just being a Battle Royale game, we just, like, aped Roblox thing and just became, like, a platform for people to make stuff. So, I mean... give it enough time and someone's going to make like an action game mode for Fortnite that everyone's going to be on. Um, just cause like now they opened it up to like a, uh, it's no longer just a shooting game, but like a creative platform type thing. I I haven't looked it up, but because I I've just now thought about it, but I I bet there. I wonder how many people are making videos. You remember like how. you know, GTA 5, everybody was making, like, skits using the game engine and whatnot. I wonder how many people have done that with Fortnite. Mm hmm You know, gone in, like, creative mode and being able to move around and just have little different things. Mm hmm That would be, that would be interesting. I'm, check that out. Um, Yeah, but I like I will if, say... uh... Okay. Oh, my bad. No, you're fine. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, like, if, if Machinima, like, that red versus blue type YouTube humor was Oh, still yeah. big right now, like, um, you'd see a lot of people in, like, Fortnite and Minecraft creator modes doing that type of stuff. That is that is funny how like yeah, you mentioned red versus blue for yeah, like even them, the the I won't say originators of it, but at least the ones who got people familiar with it. Um you know, they kind of I won't say fell off, but that kind of died down that Mm-hmm. that whole thing kind of went away. 
uh, to the point to where I like I liked Red versus Blue, but even after a point, it was just a thing of like for a lot of things, it's like you're watching something that at some point you just stop like watching it even if it's still something that you cared about mm -hmm. like i know i need to um go on their website and uh you know catch up on some stuff because i know even now they are you know especially with them closing down they are doing a final final season of red versus blue mm -hmm. you know i was like okay that's cool it's like you know how many times have you done a final final one but you know All right. And it's like, it is just kind of weird being like, wow, YouTube channels that I've watched since I was like in middle school. The guys are like, they quit YouTube. They moved on to some other thing. They switched up the content that they make, died. Like, yeah. It, it is interesting when you get to that, you get to the other side of that like life experience where like, when you're a kid it's just a bunch of new things you're discovering stuff new things are happening but like when you get to the other side of it, it was like hey some of those things from your childhood are ended forever it's just like well damn <laughs> yeah because i i think one joke they had to where they talked about at some point they had people who grew up watching their content who then were able to get jobs making that content mm-hmm That is, you know, when you when you think about there's not, you know, when we think about stuff like that with uh, like sports or something or like acting or what have you, because, you know, it's, it's one of it's those industry just keep going. Yeah. And, you, you know, you can grow up watching and be like, OK, I'm getting involved in this. But, you know, is you don't really think about it much for YouTube content, you know, to be able to watch something. Then now, hey, now I'm a part of it now. I'm, I'm in the thing that I, you know, grew up that that shaped a lot of my, uh, I won't say worldview, especially with some stuff, but you know, at least the way I view certain content. Yeah. So, um, I know you was talking about, um, uh, well, you know what? Speaking of Marvel action games, are you excited for the upcoming? Captain America Black Panther game coming out, was it next year or 2026? Um, I'm excited for the concept. I haven't seen a lot of like gameplay, and I'm very much one of those type of people where like even if the concept looks good, if I'm not into the gameplay, I'll probably just like skip it. Um, All right. so right now I'm kind of viewing it the same way I viewed um, what was that game when like the PS4 first came out, 1942 or whatever it was, the Oh order. yeah. Where I was just Yeah. like, this looks so interesting and so cinematic, but then like gameplay finally came out for it, and I was just like, I'll just watch somebody play it. Like I don't really want to do that. Yeah. I I find myself with that a lot. Number one, I don't have the time. It took a a lot of certain conditions for me to be able to do this right now. Mm hmm. Uh I also don't have the money to Important to something like um, a PC. I already need to get another Xbox to be able to play some stuff because newer stuff for now will be like, okay, the time has passed. We're only putting out on um, Series Yeah. X and stuff, you know. So there's that. But also, like, um, you know, some of this stuff is just like PC only or whatever. Like, If I don't want to get a PlayStation to play it, I have to get it on a PC Right. or, or whatever. And it's just like, I can't, right now, I can't justify spending the money that would go into a PC and then having to buy a game. Right. You know? Uh, and some of these games have been getting out of control. Uh, you know, with, with all these special editions or whatever, and you're getting it for the promise of content or other stuff. And then for some of them, like I just watched a review for Madden 25. And it was, the joke was like, he damn, he damn near could have just watched the 
the review from last year mm-hmm. because it was some of the same stuff he had. It's like some of the same stuff they're they're talking about. Was it uh, at their press conference about it? They were touting some physics based mm-hmm. uh, hit detection, and they were talking about something that was basically like a hit stick. And I was like, I haven't played Madden in about twenty years, but I remember the hit stick being around. Yeah, Man. like. A hit stick was a thing when I last played Madden, and I don't play those games. But, right, I think I was like on just, a PS2 the last time I played. Right, like I remember, I remember playing on freaking GameCube, and I was like, "Yeah, I remember the hit stick being a thing then." It's like because you could use a little extra weird, you know, stick they had. I'm like, it's like yeah, some of these games, I know. Madden and Call of Duty does this too. They'll take away something that people like and then we'll put it back as if like, hey, see what we did here? It's just like, we should have just left it alone. Like, there was no reason for you to change it. Well, not only that, they like gaslight you with like, look at this all new feature and they'll like slightly rename it something else and everyone's just like, that's the thing that was already there. Like, not only did you like take it away and put it back but now you're like trying to sell it to me as if it's something new you just undid the damage you already did and sometimes not even that because sometimes when they bring it back it doesn't work as well as it did when it, it was initially there mm-hmm. it, no, yeah. I'm, I'm, and I, I've noticed a few uh, of those Call companies. of Duty's yeah, and I've noticed Call of Duty does that with, with um, weapons, too. It's like there's some weapons that were just like out of the gate. You you can just, you were able to get this weapon just by regularly progressing through the game or through multiplayer or whatever. And it's like, because I remember it was the last one I played. Um, there was a certain sh- shotgun that I liked the previous, like for two or whatever. I got the new one or the, the, the reboot of Call of Duty. And then for Call of Duty... Too, I was just like, yeah, like I really like this gun. So hopefully, I have it. And I'm looking at it like I don't see it in, on here at all. I even see the option to play it or to get it. I was just like, I bet there you're gonna have to buy the season pass or whatever and progress through all this stuff mm. to to get to it to where it was readily available before. So I'm guessing they noticed people liked it, and so now it's more difficult to get. Probably. And. You know, they, they have their thing to where it's like, yes, some of the levels are fun to play, but the ones they keep bringing back are from games like Generations On. It's like, how can you not have been able to create something that's as fun as these, you know, couple levels that people used to play? Like, mm-hmm. I know it's not just nostalgia. It's like, it's the way they were designed and whatnot. You know. But, uh, I, I I feel you to get back to the the Cap and um, Black Panther game. I feel you on waiting for gameplay to see how they actually incorporate some stuff. It's like yeah, because like you said, the story is cool, but if they don't implement like you're supposed to be able to play as both characters, if they don't smoothly, it's like okay, they have different abilities. It's like, yeah, you can like, you know, obviously people are going to like playing one character over the other. But at the same time, there should be a balance. And I can easily see them not balancing out the characters. So that, you know, one character is just objectively more fun to play as the other. Or Um, what I'm kind of worried about is that we end up with like. Almost like a real highly polished like uncharted situation where it's just like the gameplay is not really that deep and on the surface level like cap throws his shield he blocks some bullets he punches some guy pretty cutscene happens like black panther like flips his way through a room knocks out three dudes cutscene happens and i'm just like i don't i really hope it's not one of those where it's just like i'm mostly just here to watch like a cutscene in between very sparse gameplay pieces. I've never played Uncharted, but I understand what you mean because the only thing I hear about Uncharted is how cinematic is like some of these set pieces 
set pieces are and like, like the regular yeah the regular it, gameplay yeah it's just like casual just third person shooter well like it works there because like the whole vibe is you know you're indiana jones and all but name but like if i'm being captain america or the black panther i'm not ducking behind stone pillars and slowly making my way up i'm fucking jumping over shit i'm bouncing shields off the wall i'm kicking through walls so if it ends up just being like a weird cover shooter where like you're dressed as captain america or black panther but really you're just like a dude getting to the next point then i'll be a little disappointed all right i feel you um i'm also as far as like the concept, whatever, different things I've, and this, this has been my, this is in my head because I just watched the trailer. I don't even know what the game was for. It was some DC game, but mm. uh, it's, and I remember the name of it because I saw it before and I figured that's what it was for. Um, it's on Instagram. Somebody will see something cool and they'll put the, um, they'll put the trailer up for it. Or somebody will take the animation for something that'd be like, oh yeah, Marvel needs to make animation like this. Mm -hmm. Or they have a trailer for something and it has zero to do with what the game is. Um, I know with the Marvel animation, as for Marvel Snap, which is just a card game, and you put the cards out, there's like a little animation. Yeah. And and it's just like, but these these uh, animated shorts and even the initial trailer where it has, you know, funny enough, I, I wonder if the same people who made the Marvel Snap trailer made this DC one, because it's like this beautiful kind of uh, cel-shaded um, CG look to where it's still cartoony, but, you know, obviously 3D. Mm -hmm. and you have the characters fighting something. It had, like, uh, America Chavez, Ironheart, Venom fighting these Doom bots, and Black just shows up and all this other stuff. It's just like, oh, that implies a story. That has nothing to do with this game. Mm -hmm. Is is like how I always feel whenever I see like a World of Warcraft uh, or something trailer, and I used to think like, "Oh, those are so cool." And then when I actually saw what the gameplay was, I'm like, "That looks nothing like what the trailer is." Yeah, sometimes get it with like indie games where like it's a very beautiful trailer of like a character, you know ducking and dodging the authorities or running from something and like going through this fantastical world and you're like oh, okay this like looks interesting enough and then it switches to gameplay and it's like a top-down isometric shooter which like i get some people like but it's like that's not the vibe i was getting sold up to this moment and now you're basically telling me that like while I'm doing this like top down thing, I need to just kind of like imagine that I'm doing all the stuff you were showing me. Right. And so and some of those top down, you know, shooters, whatever can be fun. Mm -hmm. It's just that it's not what you made me think I was gonna be playing. Yeah. Yeah. But um <laughs> spend enough time uh to to get into what I uh initially uh wanted you on here for uh, tell me about your experience at DreamCon. Uh, is it, how many cons have you been to before, and just in general, your thoughts? Um, I've been to a few cons all over the place. Uh, some in Colorado, some in Georgia, Florida. Um, a uh, blurred con in DC. Uh, few few places in California. DreamCon. I'm trying to think. Like, do I want to start with like the good stuff or the bad stuff? The good stuff. The yeah. convention hall and the setup was all really good. Like the organization was pretty decent. Um, the hall that it took place in was a good size. Um it was very like like just the presentation was really good. Um ass about it i i i mostly complained the whole time <laughs> uh, so what were your complaints first off and this may just be a me thing 
I, I grew up in Colorado, which is a desert, but like it's dry desert. So like being in Austin during the summer when it's like a hundred something degrees and humid as all get out, I was miserable the whole time. Like anytime I had to be outside, I knew I was going to be sweating for like 15 minutes until I got to the next air conditioned place. But like I said, that may just be like a me complaint. Mm -hmm. Um, as neat and well put together as everything was, there was not a lot of like, I want to say like floor staff kind of like directing everything. They were really good at like getting everyone into the stuff. But like once you were in there, it, it was a lot of like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and they're just, I don't, I don't think there was enough people around to ask. Um, and then I think just like, uh, biggest complaint when you have something like blurred con where the big names who get convinced to show up to it, you will see them like walking around and interacting with like the people who paid to be there. Whereas DreamCon really felt like everyone just trying to get a chance to take like a picture with the famous person and the like famous people who were there famous because it's, you know, like internet celebrities. Um, right. They kind of just like stuck to themselves the whole time and you only saw them when they were at the like panels that you had to pre-register for. Like there weren't a lot of like spontaneous meetings with like people who were like, oh shit, it's you. Um, and that was just kind of like it. It felt very showy. Uh, okay. Uh, but as far as like like the costumes, the people were there. Like everyone was friendly. The actual convention goers. Um, a lot of good panels. Lots and lots of good costumes and stuff. And the food around there was good. Um, but just like the humidity. And how showy it all seemed kind of just like uh soured a little bit of the experience for me okay what well, um so i know you mentioned blurcon who runs blurcon um i'm not entirely sure i think like it's just like a group of people trying to do a thing as opposed to like DreamCon being a group of content creators trying to have their own thing. Okay. So what um so I know you mentioned uh contrast between the, the two as far as um the big names that showed up. Uh and not knocking dream time at all because that's a a lot for yeah. each just group of you know black dudes to get together to do does blur con seem more I don't want to say organized. Well yeah I guess organized. Ooh in that scene. I haven't been in like two years, but I would say compared to the dream con I just went to and and that's I have to be clear about that is that like people have told me different things about like different years of it. Mm -hmm. Apparently people are saying like this year of DreamCon was like very well structured and like put together and all that type of jazz. Um, but I would say comparing this DreamCon to the times I went to BlurredCon, um, not as organized, but like BlurredCon more so feels like like a community type thing whereas like uh dream con this year felt very much like going into an experience like like a almost disney world type setup as opposed to like the family get together that like blurred con despite its size still kind of has that feeling of just like us coming together to like be together and share this passion Whereas this year, yes. DreamCon felt like a very, like, professional setup. Okay. Yeah, that's...
What uh what other cons have you been to? Um, I go to the Colorado Comic Con um, when I get the chance. Been to Dragon Con a few times. Um, went to San Diego Comic Con once. I want to every single year. I want to go to that one, but that was just like a very lucky timing that time I went. Um, and then random little things here and there because uh. former military so you get to be all over the country and it's just like oh a bunch of people are gathering here this weekend so i guess i'll go hang out and see what's up Is Dragon Con more of an uh, anime convention? you said dream con Uh, Dragon Con. dragon hunt yeah it it Okay. a little more anime focused yeah Okay. Because I know, um, I don't say recently, yeah, I guess recently, just start actually just paying attention. Because before, I only knew of San Diego Comic Con and on a lesser end, New York Comic Con. New York's New York seems to be big, but San Diego always seems to be bigger, which is weird because, which is weird, especially given how, at least with Marvel, New York seems to be the center of the universe. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's like there's very, there's very few, you know, or, or even if you, you know, if, as far as just the big two are, are concerned, even with DC, you know, with their fictional, you know, everybody has their fictional city. Metropolis is basically New York for Mm -hmm. for lack of better, you know, even in the Superman movie, he's literally fighting the Kryptonians in free it's like they pick up the, the Statue of Liberty. It's like, okay, so where are you guys located exactly? Right. Like, right. Uh but yeah, um so what what were some of your What's been some of your well, okay, but yeah, in general, what has been some of your your favorite experiences or favorite things about going to comics? Um, for me, I'm an introvert and a homebody, so it's mostly just the fun of like meeting up with friends and uh, getting to hang out with people. That you know, especially after uh, 2020, most of those interactions were over the internet. So getting to see people in person is still like a hell yeah moment. Um, and then like secondary. Maybe I'm like, oh, maybe I'll find like uh, some artwork or some clothing that I'm like, cool, and I'll take that home with me. But it for me, it's mostly just like getting to interact with people. Yeah. So what would be besides the the heat in uh Texas, <laughs> what would be some of your your downsides? um, if like a con is. overly crowded like they just kind of like sold tickets and got bodies in but had like no type of like here's how we'll handle this there's no like line setups and it's just kind of like confusion um you know a classic con yeah, a classic con con uh people just being in there musty and it's just kind of like Oh. <laughs> uh Matt, I smell you. You have to smell you on salt. Like it, it has to reach your nose before it reaches me. I don't know how you're just in here. Just no, that's everyone else's problem now. Um. the the heat the heat in those costumes it's <laughs> mm hmm. it's a bad it's a bad experience or bad combination. Yeah, it's just kind of one of those things of like know yourself. If you know that, like walking to the convention hall, you about to be you sweating up a storm, then like. Bring a little to-go bag, pop into one of the convention bathrooms, put all your deodorant on there. But like, don't just be walking around the convention hall like a, what's that kid from Charlie Brown, where like everyone else Oh, can uh, see, pig pig. yeah, everyone else can see the dirt and the must coming off. But you just like, what's up, guys? What? No. Right. It's like, he reminds me, he's like an early Gara. Mm-hmm. He's just, 
his dirt he just controls the dirt just keeps it around him mm -hmm. and that's why yeah i've i've never been to one but yeah the uh bo is one of the the main issues that you you hear because yeah um because of the heat and i think and i think some people um not to go classic geek or nerd but some people don't get out much and so they don't you know really under they're not nose blind yeah to themselves yeah you know they have picking it they're not good at picking up on social cues what have you like you said some people are just like i smell i know you smell you But yeah, some people are just like, oh, you know, I'm smelling things like nobody else has any complaints. This is like, how many people are you around daily smelling like that? Mm It's like, don't don't tell me nobody else when you're not around anybody else. -hmm. right and it's like you you don't even like check you they i i'm constantly just like am i getting on people's nerves and i'm a little overthinky so i know i'm not always doing it but like i have a mentality of like am i standing in people's way am i talking too loud oh shoot do i stink so for like me to see people who are completely like i'm standing in the doorway i'm talking hella loud i've not showered in a week and everyone can tell and it's just like how do you just like function and not feel any type of way that like you're making everyone around you uncomfortable that's so weird to me Hey, give me one, give me one uh, second, real quick. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think. Uh, sorry, I didn't even say about people. It's like, yeah, I think some people, and you know, I don't want to generalize people, but maybe, um, uh, as I as I heard Tony Baker say, uh, if it touches that tism. you know, maybe slightly neurodivergent, so they don't, um, <clears throat> they genuinely don't recognize when they're in the way or just certain things they're not able to pick up on. Uh, some people are just inconsiderate. I'm not Yeah. even going to put down something else. Some people are just inconsiderate. There, some, you know, it's, it sounds like the same type of people who would be like, I've, I've, I've had one too many times to where it's like a, um, uh, not a sub, not a subdivision, but it, yeah, I guess like a housing division, whatever. And it's like, you know, one of those places where uh, like townhomes or different things like that, uh, connected houses. And so it's like two lane roads Mm hmm and two people will stop in the middle of the road in their cars and talk to each other. And it's just like, either get their number or park somewhere and talk. They're just stopping in the middle of the street and then yeah get mad at people behind you because they want you to move. and it's just like i need you two to understand that what you're doing is the wrong thing like parking All right. in the road is not where that is for and yeah there's just some people are just like they'll act a certain way and if you say anything they look at you like how dare you and just like but you're wrong i'm not doing Right. anything wrong I feel that way every time I have a, I get, I I have intense, probably more so than what, what is justified, anger at people who, one, drive the wrong way up a one way uh, in the park, I mean, yeah, in the parking lot. And like, they'll do it fast. Like I said, a lot at Walmart or, and this, and this has become recent since it's become a thing. people parking in the pickup spots, but they're not there to pick up, so they'll park and then get out the car. Mm hmm Right. So now I have to circle around till they leave so I can actually park in the spot that's designated for me to pick up my stuff because you wanted to go in there. And it's just like, I can even see, although it's still frustrating, I can even see if it's like, okay, I'm gonna park here, run in and run out. But you know, most of the time people don't do that, but it's like, yes, yeah, like just park somewhere else. You know, 
And it's just And like, is it is it really that deep that you got to like walk three extra spaces instead of being like, no, I want to park right next to the door. Like some of these people, like if they could park inside the front of the store, they would. Right, they just drive through the front entrance and walk out and just, Mm hmm. and like you said, they'll be like, I don't know why, why you care because it's affecting me because you're being annoying. Yeah. And so just move out the way. Yeah, because it's like, it's a community space. That's essentially what it is. It's like, this is a space for all of us, and you're acting like, no, this is mine, and I'm going to act foolish and in the way. The, the, the thing that I always say whenever I see somebody doing that, or especially like driving, they'll do a thing to where the light is red or it's just about to turn green or just about to turn red, whatever. You just stop and they will, so they don't have to stop. They will drive on the, you know, like the middle lane to pass everybody up and just keep speeding. And my thought is always, I hope that they are not on the road at the same time as somebody else who doesn't give as much of a fuck as they do. Mm hmm. Because that's going to end up causing an accident because they're not going to care because they're just driving however. And somebody else with that same mindset is going to be like, well, I'm doing opposite way and you need, you know, and something's going to happen. And somebody's going to get hurt. And it's like, Yeah, I usually ends up with happening. It's just like two people just not paying attention finally bump into each other. Yeah. But um, what would be for you? And I wish I would have thought to ask uh, Shells this. I just thought of it. What would be your perfect uh, type of con? Like if if you could design your if you could design your own con, what would what would it entail? I think I think just I'm probably the wrong person to ask seeing as I I don't usually go to cons for like the same reasons everyone else like I said I'm mostly just there for like seeing people that I know Mm -hmm. um the perfect car for you would be all through zoom <laughs> no no still in person uh like the only thing at like cons that I would say I would want to improve on is that like the artist galley where like everyone like sets up their booth to like sell things in the big open room I just wish conventions would be just just slightly more organized about it like give them enough room in between booths where it's not just constantly just like a mush of people all the time make sure that like everyone has room to set up and like people passing by can do that but that may just be a spacing issue i i just don't like bunching so my perfect convention would be one where like at no point is anyone just kind of like trapped behind a bunch of people for no reason And and this and that issue is like for what like mostly like you've seen issues like a like a comic con or something. yeah just like uh for like bigger cons a panel's about to pop off and everyone just kind of like herds into this just like stand up mush as we all just like waddle towards the doors and I'm a, I I hate that type of crap. So like I guess perfect convention would be one making a convention hall that's like big enough and is optimized for like moving people through so there's no crowding. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I I hate that as well because that is number one, I I wouldn't call myself introverted, but I, I am very conscious that I'm a bigger dude. And so I don't want to take up too much space like from other people. And I'm also weird about just touching other people. And like you said, especially if like you said, it's like a people's body odor is an issue. it seems more likely that you're going to run up against somebody, you know, funneling Yeah. in, like, you know, herded in like sheep to, to this event. Um, and for some stuff, it's just like, 
you know, if it's if it's too annoying, it's just like it's like it's like something bigger. It's just like, do I want to do I want to bother going through this, or will I just wait thirty minutes and catch it when they post it online? Yeah, yeah, like it's like the, I need I need a convention hall run like a TSA where there's just a person to hear. <laughs> go so over I can that test line. Out. This line is full. <laughs> Make a second line over here. Oh, uh, you got this badge. Go ahead and head down, down to that door. Like I need some of that. <laughs> they probably wouldn't be bad, you know, having somebody, you know, some some people get upset, but it 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 be. As they say, the the trains will run on time. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for, I think the the reason, it is unfortunate because Comic Con is you know comic it's in the name, yeah. But most of these conventions, you know, the the bigger ones have become more about the movies coming out and or the games and less about the thing and and less and less about the medium. that these properties are derived from. Mm -hmm. So the actual people who write and draw these stories and these characters are seem more like an afterthought than anything else. They're not pushed as much. You don't, you don't hear as much. Um, I know I, I heard some DC news about their absolute DC and their new mm -hmm. imprint that they're having. Uh, I don't recall hearing much from. I don't think I've heard anything from Marvel comic wise. Except for Storm, except for I think Storm joining the Avengers, but I think I heard that from something other than Comic Con. For yeah, for DC, I heard about Absolute DC. They promoted Absolute Power more. Uh, the upcoming run of. Superman uh, with Superwoman and Justice League coming back after a couple of years and a new team for that. And those two, I was mostly paying attention to because I love the artist behind it, Dan Mora. Um, so that's, and that's why I listened to that, pay attention to that. But yeah, I didn't hear anything about comics from Marvel. Yeah, it's it's also one of those things of like I watch a lot of uh, comics commentators who their whole thing is talking about like news and stuff and like man DC's been talking about like absolute power and their plans going forward and all that type of jazz for a minute. Meanwhile, like Marvel just wrapped up Blood Hunt and I didn't know it was happening. until people were talking about it happening. I didn't know there was any buildup or like nothing was going to happen. And then even then, nothing from like official Marvel channels did I see. It was mostly people just giving like, here's what I thought of this issue. All right. Yeah, I I knew Blood Hub was 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 going on. Uh and I saw you know some stuff for that. I uh I saw that it was rated um rated um mature. It's like they, they made two two editions. One for like, you know, the standard and the other one which is more bloody. Um so I, I'm I'm gonna be breaking for that trade when it comes out. Uh, and also the Avengers run is like, yeah, there's certain things like um, there's a Wolverine book that just came out uh, written by Jonathan Hickman or art by Greg Capullo. Uh, I, I didn't know much about Capullo before he started working on Batman for the new 52. Uh, he did a lot of that, that run. Um, I want to say majority of it, but um And it's like a, you know, Elseworlds, you know, Wolverine book because, you know, some prominent characters die, but Wolverine is left and he's like revenge and it's like very bloody, Mm which hmm I have noticed that Marvel's doing a lot. They're doing a lot of, okay, we're going to do a lot that, you know, there's going to be a lot of gore and whatever. Like uh, the, the biggest thing I've heard about Marvel was more so involving the X-Men. like the whole Krakoa era ending. And They so it's just had, like, you know, they had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I heard more about the X-Men 
this year than I've ever heard in my entire life. It's like I'm, with X Men ninety seven coming out and yeah. all of that. I'm wondering if it's because like now that Marvel has um like big license and control over the X Men now that they were like, All right, we have basically done fuck all with the X Men since we sold them off to Fox. So now I guess we gotta do a bunch of like rapid character development for the mutant nation. Now that we're not right. gonna talk about in humans anymore. <laughs> right. They they literally had to book Death of the Inhumans to where they mm -hmm. killed off a majority. Yeah, and it's is that and um yeah, they talked about the three the three X Men books they were having, the Storm book and the Phoenix book. I think Wolverine, of course, has his solo book. But yeah, they've had I haven't heard anything about like what's going on with Spider Man next. What's going on with the Avengers next? Like, the only thing I heard about the Avengers next is, is mostly because of Storm. It's like, yeah, Storm is coming. It's like, um, I heard about Black Panther versus uh, Predator, mm -hmm. which they've already done Wolverine versus Predator. But it's like, I didn't hear about that at Comic Con. I saw something from Avengers versus Aliens versus Avengers. Ooh. But I heard I heard about it coming out. Then I saw something earlier before we got on. I'm like, oh, that's already out. It was like yeah. the first issue is already out. I'm like, oh, I'm like, okay. So I I may I'm tempted to see what what's what's going on with that. Uh, I I I previewed it. I think it's pretty good. Okay, yeah, I'm looking forward to. It. I've, my only thing is is like you can tell depending on who's right. You can tell very very quickly who the writer prefers mm -hmm. uh, who they just kill off in some bullshit way like yeah. uh like this like that's my only thing with the way they they do certain things especially when like when it's some when they have license just to kill whoever like um who else was it jonathan hickman when, when he came back he did the uh adventures twilight book yeah which which overall I heard was pretty good. Um, yeah, I, it, I, yeah, it turned I, out pretty all right. It was a pretty all right story altogether. Yeah, I, yeah. I, from one one biggest thing I heard was the climax was some some of the climax was a little off, but ultimately it it wasn't so off that it hurt the overall story. It, like it did feel like it did feel like they tried to wrap something. They he tried to wrap it up quickly. What what have you? It, it was one of those things of like one of the plots involved with it was like people's recent fears on like fake news generated by like AI and like that was right. kind of like a core story element to it all and I was just like this feels cheesy but alright yeah I I like when they use certain things like that but sometimes it does feel heavy handed like I I still need to finish it. I, I'm procrastinating because I think I have like two episodes left of this current season of Boys, mm -hmm. of the Boys. And one thing I have heard was just like, I guess people, are, you know, the whole, you know, everything that's woke now when somebody doesn't like something, and people always get mad at me whenever when I'm asking a genuine question, what is woke about so and so? Explain what woke means to me. And instead of doing that, they're just like, oh, you people are blah, 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 blah. I'm like, you don't know what the hell you're talking about then. But nah. I'm guessing some I'm guessing some people just now realize that the boys is, for the most part, making fun of one particular group. Yeah, that's that's essentially what happened. Was that like the boys has always been making fun of a certain type of group. But they also were like throwing jabs at everyone and it was clever enough right. writing that I guess one group just like didn't quite click with all of the jokes being made. Right. So like the more recent seasons, they have kind of dropped the like innuendo and have been very like in your face with like, this is who we're making fun of. And now all of a sudden people are like, oh, this show is going woke. It's ruined now. It's just like. They were always t making that joke since right. the and beginning. It's, and it's like, and, and just because fuck it, right, you know, extreme right, right wing people 
he's like, yeah, you know, Homelander, you know, is in some points Trump. You know, the whole he killed somebody in cold blood and everybody cheered and he's just like, oh, you know, the way he talks about people, the way he has this air of he's insecure mm-hmm. yet at the same time powerful. Um, and, you know, they can't can't handle criticism, whatever, and is a giant man child. And and just certain things, but like you said, they also make fun of everybody else. But it's it's clearly more so just like these people suck, these people are bad, but it was good enough writing, but now it's just like just in your face. And I guess some of that was, you know, they're just like, okay. We're going to have this fictional character say some stuff that you've heard this real life person say, and hear. Do you get it now? Yeah. Like they, like they literally did like a piece of gate thing where somebody came in. I'm looking for the kids, and so, and like yeah, some of that's just like, I kind of yeah. like it better when you are more, I won't say subtle with it, but it just wasn't. It feels like you didn't stop the show well, to insert this thing. It was one of those things of like the writers being like, people like Homelander. People are cheering for Homelander. Yeah. And I feel like they're kind of missing the point of the story that we're telling. And so they had to be more like, these are the bad guys and these are kind of the good guys. But like they had to right. drop some of the the hand holding to get the point across and i'm wondering if they'll like put it back up now now that it's like been very clear if they'll go back to being a little more like subtle with it but yeah i think just a lot of people caught on this season and we're like hey i don't like that right and it's because it's it's wild with anybody thinking it's wild for anybody to think that it's like it's like yeah i like homelander because I think the actor is amazing mm-hmm. and what he does. Because I remember I saw a clip of something else he was in. Uh, it was uh, Banshee. It was his uh, Cinemax show. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, his hair is shorter. I think it's his natural color. It's brown. Yeah. You know, he's still he's still an asshole on that too. But it is very different. It's, yeah. Um, number one, you you see, I believe they put lifts in his shoes as Homelander. Because he's not that tall of a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just the little visual tics he does is like great acting. And so you like it because the actor does a great job at, um, in a way, humanizing him. And like there are things that happen to Homelander that I'm just like, oh, I feel for you in this thing of, wanting love and people basically beating any putting the installing the constant need for love yeah in you but at the same time beating it out of you so that you don't know how to properly receive it or give it yourself but you still have you always have this drive to get it from certain people mm-hmm. that you view as powerful or important. And and if anything, if like conservatives want to like third person it a little bit, there's a commentary on the fact of like Homelander was like born with the powers of like Superman essentially. And instead of like the Superman route where they like put him in a loving environment or like here's how you like care about human life about things. Just like in real life, a corporation was just like, well, how do we think child rearing works? And like, right. made a bunch of dumb decisions and like, now we got to live with this result. Right. Or because or, people uh, in suits were like, yeah, this this will definitely work. Or as I've, I've been listening to somebody talk about a lot recently, uh, capitalism. Mm-hmm. The thought was not, you know, we have this we created this thing not for the benefit not for the benefit of humanity as a whole exactly but how can we use this this person to make us money 
Exactly. And and now they created a monster they can't control. They worry so much about money and all this other stuff that they've allowed all these atrocities to the point to where even if they wanted to reverse course, they can't. Yeah, exactly. Because it's it wouldn't like, it's like there you go, conservatives. It's Disney. If Disney owned Superman, what would they have done with him? There is your critique on the left throughout the entire show. But like, Homelander is still Homelander, and you guys can't be all right. like, "Hey, I don't like this." Right. It's like, yeah. It's like it's. It, it reminds me of somebody. You know, a very poignant point that I heard somebody bring up to where it's just like. If we're talking about slavery and you automatically and exclusively identify with the slave owners mm -hmm. and not the abolitionists, what does that say about you? And I guess that's that thing of just like, yeah, I identify with Homeland. You mean the narcissistic murderer rapist? Right. That's the person you identify with. You don't identify with the people trying to stop them. This person who is, is like, regardless of what I feel for him, is just like, oh man, that is sad. You still have to go though because you're horrible. Yeah, it's a thing of like, everyone has, everyone got to a place for a reason. And that is very, like, a very human thing to have to, like, come to realize and understand that, like, no one just, like, starts off in, like, a, a bad place. Like, there were steps to it. However, they still, like, made decisions. And you can't just be like, well, no, they're not allowed to have consequences because, like, look at this thing that happened to them. It's just like, Yeah, but he still did the thing. Right. And if, and the thing, like, if it were anybody else, and just once again with conservatives, if it were anybody else in this situation, you would say they need to be held accountable. You know, personal responsibility, pulling yourself, all this other crap that they spew at everybody else when it comes from somebody who they feel is powerful or is, you know, Mm -hmm. And they feel as they're they're betters or somebody who's like, I hope to be this person one day. All of a sudden, it's just like, but yeah, but you know, we can't, like you said, we can't hold them accountable because, well, what if they get mad and they won't do this anymore? It's like they, that means they were never as good as you said they were. Right. If them being held to the standards that they say that everybody else should be held to makes them not want to do the things that. You that you claim that they're good for doing, then they're not truly good. They're the reason they're doing this is for bullcrap, is to keep them from being held accountable. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, or, you know, just basic decency. But yeah, But yeah, but yeah. it's also Okay. a thing of like consequences have to be enforced. If you have a person who pushes that line and everyone just kind of goes, eh, it's fine. Well, then that person's no longer going to like view it as a line anymore. They're going to be like, eh, people don't care when I do things. And very much like the show, he like kills a dude in front of everyone else and people start cheering. And it's just like, why would he get better? Like he just Right. killed someone like no, tr he threw a trash cup at his kid. Dick move. I would have totally pre like him like shoulder checking him or something. Fine. Like, yeah, someone threw something at your kid, but like murdering someone and everyone Right. like, cheers for you. It's just like, yeah, obviously he's going to get worse. Right. It's like the, the whole he he attacked him. Then it's like there is nothing he could have done. that would ever put him in the same, like you say, it's a dick move, but there's nothing that man could do to reasonably hurt your son physically. Right. If It's anything, like, I doubt that. yeah, your son has I, I, a bad day and kills that guy on accident. right. I, like, I doubt that can, I think that can was more of an annoyance than it, like it actually hurt. Even if your son wasn't superpowered, that was an empty can Mm hmm You know, and, and like you said, it's like once he does that and he sees that, the, you know, the sycophants who will um, excuse it, then it is a thing of like, well, why would he, like, you've just told him that it's okay. The, the line that we said we had 
as you said, it's no longer a line, it's a suggestion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like the thing where people have, like, where bosses be like, give those vague ass, you know, things. Oh, I would like, or, you know, where they want you to do something, but they phrase it in a way that makes it seem like that it's a suggestion or whatever, and not what it really is of them telling you to do something. Mm -hmm. and, and, as, and I think that's what annoys people, just like, you're not asking me to do something, you're telling me to do something. Which is fine, but stop asking. But stop acting like it's a thing between. It's a conversation between two people on equal footing. It's not. Yeah. But yeah, and but yeah, and it's the thing of like, yeah, if you don't check people, especially people with privilege, in the simple ways that we can, then they're just going to do, um, whatever the hell they want to, whenever the hell they want to, because you've already shown them that they can. Mm -hmm. And you know you can go like, well, they would never do this. It's like, why wouldn't they? You've already shown them that nothing's going to happen to them. You've shown them that there, there's no, uh, there's no consequences for anything that they do. Exactly. And and it's it's and it's only a uh, it's only a matter of time before I the phrase has I've been hearing this phrase a lot was to say the the le never thought the leopards would eat my face. Yeah, it's like you you keep seeing it. Uh, I know this, this big thing. I have to make something about it later. Uh, they're saying that Kamala isn't uh, eligible for president because of was it 1857 Dred Scott ruling? Mm. Um, basically, like descendants of uh, the descendants of Africans, you know, slaves, whatever. The Constitution never never mentioned the Constitution. The Constitution was never meant to apply to them, and so they they can't be. I think I think that's where the 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 phrase "there is no right" or whatever that the Negro has any claim to or should be upheld or uplifted, something like that. Yeah, uh, and that also goes into just like the the whole thing of like uh, if your parents weren't. Uh, U.S. citizens at the time of the writing of the Constitution, then you, you know, some, some bull crap, bull crap like that. And it's a thing of like, number one, that's racist as hell. Number two, that was overturned by two amendments following that. Well, not only that, not even having to get like super nerdy with that, but like one of the requirements. Is that you have to be born here and over thirty-five? She meets the requirements. I don't know why you guys are trying to bring up old as fuck shit. Like we've moved, like things have there's, happened since eighteen hundreds. I don't know if you guys know this. Right. There's no, there's no. You cannot. You cannot tell me in any way. In in good faith. I'll put it like this because I've heard I've seen a lot of people say some shit that's just like the, what you're telling me is you're willingly choosing to be stupid. Um, you can't tell me in good faith that this isn't racist. It is so racist that I I am eagerly awaiting to hear what comes out of these people's mouth next because in the same the same people who drafted this and like, use it as an argument. Also use also use his basis to say why Nikki Haley and Vivek uh, Waswami mm -hmm. can't hold the office and shouldn't be on the ticket either. And it's just like, huh? I would love to hear their explanations of why that isn't racist, of why picking them out and saying that you two shouldn't be allowed to run for president, even though you're both born here, you know. And they'll they'll figure out some way to to weasel past it or say that oh this group isn't doesn't represent the Republican Party even though they endorse JD Vance even though multiple people like Ted Cruz and other people are part of this particular Republican well, organization. It's one of those things. Um, I recently heard people someone talking about it where it's just like. Um, you you go back in time and like if someone asks you how does your rake work 
you know exactly how the rake works you know how like the handle interacts with the brush interacts with the ground and like what the purpose of it is but like now if someone is just like how does your phone you know send a text message to someone else you know how to make it do that but like you don't know what makes it do it and it's the same way with like government where like you know i go to the booth i hit a check mark and like this person is like supposed to become president based on like who gets more of the votes but as soon as you start getting into like the nuance of it it's all complicated and this goes here and this goes there and so you have the people who bring up these obscure things being like hey i also don't know how this works but i'm banking on the fact that i know like just a slight bit more than you do and can just like word salad my way through an explanation that sounds reasonable i was just like just say the thing man you don't want the black person to be president like just be up front with you. you're doing a whole lot of gymnastics just to be like i don't like the darkies well they you have that's that's what that's what the common folk are for to to be blunt about it Mm -hmm. But they have to have some this this bullcrap plausible deniability, so that you know when people throw it back in their face, they're like, "Well, actually, you guys are the racist for even bringing it up." It's just like, but you, you first, you said that she's not black, which I get pissed off anytime I see a black person repeat that. It's just like, so this white man told you that she's not black, but this clearly black woman is not black, and you believe them. Right. It's like something's wrong with you. Uh, I don't want to hear any black. I don't want to hear any non. But first of all, I don't want to hear anybody question a black person's blackness in general. I damn sure don't want a racist white person doing it, and we just act like that's okay. Or for the news media to keep talking about it, it should have been brought up one at the most two days, and then dropped, and it should have been brought up for me in that point of who is he to question her blackness? Yeah. Also, why does it matter? It's, it's one of those things where like within the community, we do have those conversations. However annoying, I personally find them because like yeah. we have our own hangups and things that we have to work on. But the fact that like he contributes to that conversation and there were people within the community being like, yeah, what he said. And it's just like, no, we're having those discussions. He needs to mind his fucking business. Like exactly. It's like you don't you don't get to decide who's black and who's not. Mm -hmm. As if number one, it affects you. Number two, as if it even matters. It's like her daddy's black, she's black. You know, I don't I don't have time for this where her dad's Jamaican, he's not a descendant. It's like, I don't give a fuck. She's black. It's like if I go to Africa. They weren't slaves in America either, but I know they're black. They're still black. Like, we're not talking about, uh, oh, I guess I should have. Okay, I need a new computer in general. <laughs> How the hell is your battery running low and you've been charged up for days? Technology, man. Nah, it's, Don't you love it's it? very much one of the things, like, it's, it's America. Like, the cops don't care about the very intricate you know family background of how you got there when they're like seeing you out on the street you're black right even if you're not even like you have no african descent but like you're slightly brown your same treatment i wouldn't have known her i wouldn't know her mom was indian until you know until she you know ran i wouldn't say ran for president the first time mm -hmm. and it's like if somebody has to tell you that this person is mixed with something else and you already perceive them as black, then there's no other question about it. I'm mm -hmm. not, I'm not entertaining this, this message, but I don't know. I would love to talk more, but I don't want to run the risk of this motherfucker just randomly turning off. Right. It's only been on. We've only been talking for an hour, and 30 minutes and you're, you, okay. <laughs> like, the, like the technology but that's that's okay because i i keep telling myself and i keep telling my wife it's just like i want to get a 
preferably a Samsung tablet. Mm-hmm. Um, because right now I'm using my phone for the main camera. I just turned the, the screen, I just turned the camera off of my laptop and I'm using my phone. <clears throat> so so I preferably I want to stay in the Samsung uh ecosystem. Yeah. And I, even at the most, get maybe like uh the the S tab F E. It doesn't have everything I want, but it has enough. And it's powerful enough that I think I'll be okay. I can look at my comics on it. I can get on. I can do this. Right. And it has expandable memory, so I can just, you know, and so I can just do stuff like that. But yeah, my 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 old girl is shit now. So <laughs> uh, tell people tell people where they can find you before this shuts off on us. Um. Yeah, like mostly just on Twitch, Casique zero twenty three. Um, there's a link to my Instagram there, but I mostly just be putting memes and stuff. It's nothing important, so just Twitch. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, you can find me at Bold Expressions on Twitter and Instagram, BLD Expressions on both Twitter and Instagram, Bold Expressions Podcast on YouTube. Uh, if you have anything you want to send me, you can send it to Bold Expressions number four at gmail.com. Uh, thank you to my guests. Thank you for all the people who are watching, supporting, um, all that. Uh, thank the guests for for rocking with me, for coming back on again. Mm-hmm. Um, love to have you on whenever you're you're able to. Um, Good stuff. Uh, so I was, yeah, as, you know, as I always say, you know, time is you can never get time back. No mm-hmm. matter what you do. Whatever time you spent doing something, that time is gone forever. So whatever, whoever spends their time talking to me or listening to this, you could have been doing something else. And so I greatly appreciate it. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Have a good day, good morning, good evening, whatever you're watching or listening to this. And as always, don't be so busy proving your point that you forget your purpose. <laughs>